Lasha Ryanko from High Voltage. We're diving right in to Astronaut, but I can't throw my guitar back into the um, case. So I'm lifting my butt up and I'm going to put it away. So all of the reads that I have done thus far on Ask Not, the Kennedys, and the women they destroyed are all on the playlist on High Voltage. I'm downloading it on um, l and Soul Sisters as well, because this channel, there's 295 people that have not subscribed, have un not unsubscribed. And I'm pretty sure that the people that were subscribed to l and Soul Sisters and Lasha Rajanko, where I've also done lives and still do, between the three channels, it's something like 85 human beings away from reaching monetization, which you all know how much that means to me um, in reference to the medical malpractice, everything on the channel that I've been talking about for, you know, a, a year and four months. And if I had kept them together, the way it works, the way I've seen the algorithm of YouTube work is, it, like if the 295 and the 77 switch today to um, high voltage, probably in a week, we'd be at 2000 because that's just, it, it grows and grows. And as you get better and better at your craft, you know, before I dive in, if you've never been to this channel before, again, my name is Lasha. I have more videos than probably Pierce Morgan has ever done in his life. And, and it doesn't make an iota of difference. It really is about the quality. And also, I've, I've watched YouTube from the outside for so long and participated and people would get annoyed with how much I was participating. So that's why I started my own thing because I have a lot of thoughts too that I'd like to share. But one of the things that I've noticed in sharing thoughts and ideas and ideologies and theories is the reason I admire Candace Owen explicitly. I would trust that woman with my life. You know, I don't believe in a lot of her um, indoctrinated, she doesn't think that she's indoctrinated, but we all are to a point. But she really has taught me to open my eyes about what's going on in the world. And whatever affects the US is going to affect Canada. And that's why I keep such a close eye on American politics. And what tweaked my, tweaked? What tweaked my interest, what Tweety Bud tweaked my interest in this book was that they are a dynasty, just, and they still are. In my videos, I think I said something like, in the day, no, to this day, they are still powerhouses. And as I said, I think Maureen Callahan wrote this book because she did not want Bobby Kennedy Jr., Bobby's son, to get into office. 
But either way, I think both parties are as corrupt as each other. And I'll explain why I think that. I'll talk about, I had a very, very big life until I broke my leg. And that it's been seven years. That takes a lot away from your development, even in seven years. So I know people say, I look drunk or, um, yeah, I smoke marijuana. You all know why, and I'm not going to talk about it. You know why? Because of this doctor not admitting he made an error, left me in a wheelchair for a year. But I marched on. But I'm not going to march to my own detriment. And all of you know what I'm talking about with the walk of oath. And one thing that can happen with the rest of development, which I'm very well aware that I have, not as far as your maturity or your, your ability to comprehend, that's not what arrested development is. It's if you lose seven years of your life and I'm 53 and this happened at 46, it happened in 2017. By the time I started really, like my last surgery was 2019 of August the 28th, or sorry, August the 20, um, August the 24th, no, it was August the 23rd of 2019 is when I had the last surgery, when I had the proper tiny pins taken out of my knee but I had to keep those in even after the um, other operation because the tiny pins hold the femur bar up. But this doctor literally took a nail and stuck it underneath my kneecaps, but it's all on my videos. And what I've realized, even that surgeon, he's an elite. You know, I bet you his kids are in medical school. So what is he going to teach them? From what, what I learned from this lesson with my leg, it's very simple. When I lit, worked at Jenny Craig and I had a big life and um, saved money, my marriage fell apart because my husband had no money to put into a condo. I did, I didn't want to do it. I wanted to go to school and further my education. He was 11 years older, 10 years older, and I was very influenced. I was influenced very easily. And I caved and I lost everything. And I mean everything. But that's not why I look tired today. That's because I've been working hard. Now, the ADHD rant that I just went on To summarize, power. I never applied for a job because I wanted power. I wanted to make more money, right? These people want power. I don't think Jackie Onassis was the nicest person in the world. Her and Jack Kennedy were like two little gossips. And I know that I talk a little slower. I know I don't talk really, really fast. Um, and I know that I do a very long intro. However, just hang with me in this little nook and I'm going to read this book. And I know lots of other people are reading it too, but I want to walk to the beat of my, my own drum, even though some days I might look like a bum, but I promise that I, I'm really going to get into it because there's nothing more annoying than people saying they're going to do something and not do it. And do you know how I know that? Because I am a procrastinator. Why am I a procrastinator? Because you're afraid of failure. But what I was going to say about Candace Owens, the, the, the um, interview she did on the transgender subject and why I'm so interested in that and I want to talk about that. It's because I had a member in my family who was um, gay and you know, the family disowned him. 
Um, okay. I was 11 years old. I always knew. And so you should go to Lasha Rajanko or if you go to the playlist on this channel, you will, there's, it says transgender discussions and there's two videos at the top. And then I've tried to download all of my dancing, the dance shorts and even the long dancing, dancing um, into one playlist. So that's why I divided it up. Some people like the singing, some people like the dancing, some people like it when I go for a, a bicycle ride or a scooter ride. Some people love the dog shorts, some people like my tarot card readings, some people like my babbling, some people hate it. But I want to present Maureen Callahan's work in the most professional way because that's what this book deserves. Because we deserve better than what these people have done in their lives and what they continue to do, which is nothing for the common man. Even, you know, Elon Musk pretending he's some kind of hero. Is he? I don't know. Would I ever be, I love it when people go on Facebook and they go on um, Instagram and they send me messages that they're Keanu Reeves or um, Elon Musk. Like, do people think I'm stupid? Breeze, Gabrielle, I have to call you back, Breeze. Sorry, I had to do my video first. We are gonna talk. He lives in the UK. And we met on Facebook, talk, 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 talk. And it's about music. And he loves my singing. I can't sing worth a damn today because I'm so tired. But I try, like I don't have a regular pattern to the show, an intro and outro. Oh, Candace Owens, she stuck to her guns when she did the video with one of the um, transgender women because they're not women. You can't all of a sudden decide that you're a dog and you wake up and I, I think I'm a dog. Yeah, I play with Sophie and pretend I'm a dog with her. That's playing. I know I'm not a dog. Men don't have reproductive organs and there are hermaphrodites. We're gonna get into all of that. But what I'm trying to say is the point is this, I always have trouble getting to the point, but I'm working on it. These rich Ken um, Kennedys, um, the royal family, the evil Jekyll, the Rockefellers, the Gettys. It always says Getty image. You ever notice that on CNN, Getty image? I've never looked up what that is, but I can pretty much guess without saying anything. It's 11 o'clock here, and I didn't go to bed until three last night, and I awoke at eight o'clock. So let's get into it. Um, for those of you that are reading the book with me, I'm on page 17. So if you wanna take a snapshot, I'm on page 17, and this is what I'm gonna to try to get through today. And at the beginning of the video, I'm going to say, move the line 15 minutes in, that's when I start to read. Actually, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to try to, you know what? All right, so this page here, do you want to take a snapshot? And the reason I'm putting this up on both LNL Soul Sisters and um, uh, High Voltage is just, I'm hoping it reach, reaches a larger audience because I think the myth of Camelot 
should be debunked. That's why I'm reading it. I'm not reading it out of morbid curiosity. Uh, and then I want to get right in to Jackie Bouvier. And I am going to do an interjection in the middle of the book because Grey Gardens doesn't come up, okay? So, starting with page 17 at exactly 1541. There was the key to hooking him. She knew it instinctively. Cavan's wife, Kelly, on the other hand, would practically pant and drool whenever John would come in. Jesus, Kelly, Carolyn would say, get it together. The truth was, Carolyn was just as, as starstruck. I remember Maureen Callahan and Megan Kelly talking about this, and Megan Kelly went to the same university as JFK, and all of the women were trying to, you know, grab this prince, which turned out to be a toad, like, the ginger. So they've gone back. They, they were talking about his other girlfriend, um, Catherine, in the or was it Catherine or Caitlin? Either way, they were talking about that relationship and how he had a pattern of dangerous, destructive behavior. And it's almost like he knows he can be, yeah, I just groomed myself, okay? All right, anyway, stop talking, Lasha. So now they're going back to how they met, okay? It kind of goes back and forth a little bit, but, but I like the way she takes each character and talks about the character, and then it gets a little more complicated, but... I'm going to get through it, and so are you. But it's really about how I present it for you to get through it, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so underneath Carolyn's simple and fussy presentation was a very complicated woman. She was always assessing, teasing apart someone's psyche and figuring out what made them tick, what would make them happy or upset, and you, mm, yikes. Okay, here we go. She could hone in on someone's most painful insecurity and recognize it. But she could also be extremely kind and warm. I'm just absorbing that without talking. You never knew which Carolyn you were going to get. Hmm, didn't they say in the other chapters that there were two sides to John? Hmm, birds of a feather do flock together even though you think they're mismatched. Why do you think Harry and Meghan are not apart? Well, that's easy. He watched what Diana and Charles did. And if Charles and Diana think that this little boy didn't absorb all of that, he did. And unfortunately, the poor lad is still stuck there. And that's where I think people need to back off Harry. But he's being a little dink. Anyways, uh, this is such a familiar story about women. And it blows my mind. I always thought it was men that did stuff like this. Look, I'm not a saint, but I've never manipulated anybody to do what I want them to do. No, I haven't. No. I had to pause because I had to think and I'm no, I have not. And if somebody can remind me of something that I did and I've forgotten, then I apologize in advance. Okay, so you never knew which Carolyn you were going to get. 
Even her closest friends were kept at a remove. If you crossed her, she would drop you flat. Just cut you off with no way back. I like that. I like that. I like that could be a song. If you crossed her, she would dump you flat. Just cut you off with, with no way back. It was a trait she shared with John's mother too. You see? Maybe he had an Oedipus or an Oedipus or an Oedipictal. You know what I'm saying. I can't believe Freud was a fraud now. Okay. Carolyn was serious. Carolyn was so good at reading people. The... I have to put my glasses on time now. This is when I start getting serious. Okay. Carolyn was so good at reading people, um, Calvin especially, that soon she was styling his big clients. Oh, that's right. The models, the movie stars, the network news anchors, the socialites. And after each wealthy female client left, Carolyn's different mask would drop. She turned and drilled down every colleague in the room. Where do you think that woman gets all her money? How did she land that guy? Where do you go to meet rich men, famous men? I kind of look like Harry Potter right now, except my eyes, are, I've got China blue eyes. Anyways, okay, Carolyn, like, was serious. That was her end game? Oh my gosh! Hey, Megan's infiltrating everywhere! <laughs> oh no! Oh my God. Oh gosh. I've never done that. You know how to meet a guy? You know how to meet a guy? Do you know anybody? You know anybody? Do you know anybody? Can I meet them? Can I meet them? Can I meet them? Well, that's not true. I've done that quite a few times. Did you believe me? I'll always tell you if I'm full of BS. I just like to play. Anyways, okay, so Carolyn was serious. That was her end game. <sighs> she studied Calvin's models harder than any subject in school. Can you imagine studying a person more than studying a book? That's, 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 that, 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 that's all, folks. And I'm not imitating stutterers, stammerers. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. Okay, all right, how did she study them? Okay, how did you stay so thin? Um, what, what do they do to their hair, their skin? Who did their waxing, plucking, dyeing, manicures, polish or no polish, nails, long or short? She studied their high, low, aesthetic, the way they'd uh, match a white Hanes t-shirt with Prada or a low top Converse, remember Converse sneakers with a floor sweeping silk skirt? I love those days. The trick was to look like you threw it all together without thinking when really you spent hours trying. All that effort had to look effortless. That sounds like a lot of effort to look effortless, and it doesn't look effortless. Actually, it does. I'll tell you why. It wasn't easy to pull off at Calvin. Calvin Klein, Calvin Klein. When I'm talking about Calvin, I'm talking about Calvin Klein. He was so misogynist. So, oh, he was, oh, this, is this a real word? Micromanagey? This is what Candace is, Owens is talking about. How do you take a word like baggot with an F that originally meant in a Virginia Woolf book that it was a, a pack of thistles? I even knew that. Probably from watching the hours that Virginia, well, anyways. Okay, Converse sneakers 
effortless, Calvin Klein, micromanagey, language is changing, it's so stupid. Can't we just stick to one language? Does it have to forever evolve? Look what we're evolving into. And I'm even talking about, I'm talking about me, we, we. Maybe you're not. I'm, I'm questioning my morality, my ethics at times. Like, I'm not joking. I did this like I was just trying to show off my nail polish, but I really wasn't. I really wasn't. Okay, anyways. So, okay, so she was a great designer. So she was like um, um, uh, the girl, Meryl Streep from The Devil Wears Prada. Emily Blunt and Anne Hathaway. Okay, so that's who Carolyn Bissett was. She was Miranda. Okay, he was micromanagey, so obsessed with detail and order and cleanliness that he'd installed floor, what? Floor, floor to ceiling mirrors in the offices and kept the lights always on and bright so the staff would be looking their best always. But somehow, some way, Carolyn had figured out how to lower the lights in her office. What does that mean? She'd sit there and secretly pluck stray hairs from her brows or her chin. I don't have any hair on my chin. Do you have hair on your chinny chin chin? I sure could use an eyebrow pluck though. I just had to throw that in. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't be too serious about this. Okay. This is common. Oh, did John pluck his eyebrows too? Did he get manicures too? Oh, well, let's read about this. Okay. This in common with John, a sense that rules didn't apply to her. She was special and she knew it. The way to get John was to make him think she was the prize, not him. That's mean. That's really mean. Not according to H.G. Tudor. Carolyn could be in a room full of supermodels and still make John Kennedy want her. And when he finally came around and asked her out, she'd just as often say no that she had other plans. What, did she take the playbook out of Anne Boleyn trying to bag Henry VIII? or the third or whatever. Really? Carolyn never had anything better to do. She'd just hole up in her crappy studio apartment all weekend, hoping that people would assume she had this fabulous, mysterious life full of wealthy suitors. <gasps> She'd say loudly that she was not waiting around. I'm not waiting around for JFK Jr. to call, but really, she was waiting around for J.F. Jr. to call. <laughs> I love the way Maureen writes. As she grew closer, she would insult him just to keep him back on his heel. <gasps> okay, Megan. It's like, is, is this like Megan and Harry? <laughs> Anyways, the, the point of this is he would marvel at her beauty and she wanted him so bad. I bet you he was terrible in bed too. I know you're probably looking at me thinking, yeah, okay, old lady. <laughs> okay, May 24th, 1992, there was a big gala the night for the Amazon rainforest. Oh, now when I think of Amazon, I think of Jeff Bezos and, I, and yeah, that's why I don't order anything on Amazon. That's where everybody buys everything. That's why he called it Amazon after the rainforest. What, did he get that idea from JFK? Like all these people are connected, you know. They have their hands in all kinds of pies. All right. 
There was a big gala that night for the Amazon rainforest, the hippest cause going. Carolyn's friend, Narcoso, I'm just gonna call him Narco. Narco Rodriguez, an upcoming designer at Calvin, strolled by. You're going to die young, he told her. John Kennedy was going. What? Carolyn's friend, Narciso Rodriguez, an up and coming designer at Calvin Klein, strolled by. You're going to die, he told her. John Kennedy was going. You're going to die, he told her. John Kennedy, oh, you're going to die. John Kennedy is going. See, I take words literally. Die to me means, but you're just gonna, you're gonna die, right? I get it, I get it. And I'm not making fun of anybody, please. Okay, I, all uh, right, okay. So John Kennedy was going. He had a seat of honor at Calvin's table. In fact, this was a shock. Carolyn was again seeing John, but they were on and off. He clearly hadn't invited her. What was happening? Was he bringing someone else on his date? Or was he planning to go solo so he could shop around for other women, celebrities, models, women of his social strata? I need the ticket, Carolyn said. Her friend refused. Carolyn begged. She badgered, she bullied, she nagged, and she whined. Give it to me. This is important. I'm your friend. I need the favor. What is wrong with you? This is important. I'm your friend. I need the favor. What is wrong with you? Could you imagine somebody building that themselves up into hysterics like that? Like when you think of actors and, and they have to bring their emotions up to a certain climax and, and deliver. Oh my gosh. That, that's probably why they need the Botox, eh? Especially when, oh, never mind. Okay. So anyways, she got the ticket. Carolyn, okay, wait a minute. Carolyn, ever since, wait a minute, wait a minute. But her friend had zero patience for this, so she didn't get, okay. She'd already been distancing herself from Carolyn ever since the night she had to rush home to see her father sick to see her sick father. Carolyn seemed full of concern, but her questions were weird. How long was she going for? When was she planning to be back? Was her boyfriend joining her? That last one made her queasy. And lo and behold, the next day, that coworker's boyfriend called her. Your friend Carolyn, he said, is really blanked up. Carolyn had made a move. Her friend hadn't been surprised so much as hurt. And though she never said a thing to Carolyn, well, karma could be a witch. No ticket for her. So yeah, I, I, I wasn't gonna read all that, but I figured she didn't get a ticket. So John Kennedy Jr. was Carolyn's white whale, but snagging him long-term seemed unlikely. Everyone in their circle had watched Carolyn treat so many boyfriends terribly. It was emotional abuse that sometimes turned physical. Oh, and we get a little Amber Heard in here too. There was the actor who was totally in love with Carolyn who'd meet them at NoHo Star and sit there. I thought it was going to say SoHo for a minute. And then I was going to go, <gasps> All right, so... Who's the actor? Okay, anyways, she treated him like crap. She'd insult him. And then there, what? Then there was the underwear model. I remember the Calvin Klein underwear model. Oh my gosh, is this the same underwear model? The male model had done nothing wrong, but Carolyn always had to be right. So the underwear model, um, head over heels for Carolyn 
and ho, oh, how she tormented him. Ho, oh, she tormented this guy. Um, this guy, with his own billboard in Times Square, the new face of Calvin, and Carolyn just around him, uh, just, just ground, blah, 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 and Carolyn just ground him down till he felt like nothing. Uh, ground him down till he felt like nothing. I take everything so literally, but Carolyn always had to be right. Date them, train them, dump them, she'd say. To the young girl at Calvin who idolized Carolyn so sweet and impressionable with her nice down-to-earth boyfriend, break up with him, Carolyn said. He's not good enough for you. What Carolyn meant was he doesn't make enough money. Can I interject there? Well, I'll read this last bit. Later at the gala, her friend with three extra tickets and true blue boyfriend saw Carolyn leaning against the bar, tossing her long blonde hair and laughing so loudly, occasionally introducing everyone she saw to my friend, John Kennedy. When, when she said, um, what Carolyn meant was he doesn't make enough money if somebody is not good enough for you. That is why I hate asking people, what do you do for a living? Like, what do you do for a living? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Because immediately when people tell you what they do for a living, most people from what, when I've asked people, why do you ask people what they do for a living first and the and the answer is always well to find out what they do and where they are in life you know what i ask people what are your hobbies what do you like to do like who are you and if your work is who you are then that's wonderful but if you're a stockbroker and your work is who you are i want you know nothing to do with you Anyways, being John's exclusive girlfriend, when it finally happened, it looks like there was a long time in between, was a full-time job once they got serious. Carolyn being transforming, Carolyn being transforming herself from a downtown hipster with unwashed dirty blonde hair and an extra 15 pounds to a sleek Upper East Side white blonde ice queen. She treated herself like an art project. How does, she, how does Maureen know that though? Maureen, you can't name your sources. She can't name her sources. What's she supposed to do? Put a quote on everything? Like, God. Anyway, I could see it. I could see it. But it is kind of strange for me and I'll say this at the end of Carolyn Bassett. Okay, so she treated herself like an art project, a sculpture defined by removal, the weight, the small lines erased with Botox. Really? She wasn't even 40 years old. You guys must think I need like a full on facelift, teeth done, Jowls done, nose done, eyes done, Botox done. I, I can't imagine what I might, must look like to all of you and to movie stars when most people you see on YouTube are absolutely gorgeous. And I'm not, I'm not saying people aren't beautiful. I'm talking about physically aesthetic. It's, it's a proven fact, scientifically proven fact that men and women will be attracted to men with more aesthetic features. So like not Lasha knows best. I used to think Carolyn Bissett looked like a, a piece of art. I thought she was that beautiful. And I remember aspiring to her and I was, yeah. Yeah, it was bad back then. At any rate, um, um, her face grew hard and angular with hollows under her cheekbones, 
Her once un unruly hair was heated and ironed straight, her scalp scorched and pulsating under the bleach and burns, cooled into hard raised scabs underneath the platinum mane. That's really, really dumb. You can get alopecia that, that way too. And through stress. Um, that's terrible. Do you know that Joan Crawford actually had her molars taken out at the back? Joan Crawford was an actress in the 50s and she was in the movie um, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane with Betty Davis. Yeah, she had her molars removed to give her high cheekbones, eh? And now people want to plump up, but when the collagen goes and the estrogen leaves the building, there's not much you can do. Well, you can take out you can still take estrogen and that does help you stay a little more youthful never know anyway okay so gone were the days of showing up with the calvin klein office hung over wearing dirty clothes and basically her cheap egyptian musk bought off the street now she secretly took bar classes at Burke on the Upper East Side. Oh, the Upper East Side. That just reminded me, if you want to watch a movie to find out about the wives at the Upper East Side, watch Laura Linney and Scarlett Johansson in Nanny. It's so good. Even though she hated exercise, who can hate exercising? I don't get that. Just hated it. Carolyn, oh, and um, helped curb her hunger. Oh, oh, well, you see, at least I tell you when I'm smoking pot, at least when I did my reading, I said, yes, I'm having a little bit of a Caesar. That's why I show people where I live. So, you know, if you ever meet me, you're not like surprised. <laughs> this is me, you know? Look, I kept up a facade of who I was from a little kid all the way up to maybe seven years ago. And seven years ago when I broke my leg, it, yeah, it was the best and worst of times, but I didn't know that she did all of that to kill her hunger. Too bad they didn't know about Ozempic, eh, back then? Oh, they probably did. Who knows? Anyways, she studied and she went to Burke, and, and then I remember the People magazine of um, John being the sexiest man alive, stashed under her kitchen sink. I remember that from seeing it, um, this was not in the 90s, so I would have been in my 20s, I guess. When her friends saw paparazzi pics of Carolyn in a kayak paddling along a shirtless John at the Hudson River, they laughed so hard they cried. Carolyn's natural habitat was the bar at Rex, a banquet of what? Whatever that is at Barney's, it's some kind of a drink. Kayaking. Wow, did she want this? That's kind of like Diana pretending that she loved hunting and being out in Scotland and, and, and like lied about who she was to Charles. So I guess Lady Colin Campbell was right then. I find it funny that she's reading and if you don't know who I'm talking about, that's fine because I'm a staunch supporter of hers staunch supporter and she's going to be reading this book and i wasn't going to because she was and then i thought well that is the stupidest thing that anybody could ever do what i'm just going to take a back seat because she has thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people because she's that talented and so it should be that way no i'm going to give myself a chance and I'm going to get better and better as I go on. 
Um, when John proposed two years later, Carolyn waited three weeks before saying yes. Yeah, part of that was manipulation, 100, tormenting him. I, that's just a bunch of BS. Carolyn had learned, oh, the, the private John Carolyn had learned was a moody and complicated person, not nearly as low maintenance as his public image, a mystery to others, and most often to himself. Carolyn would be marrying someone who at 36 years old, oh, she was 36 and getting Botox? That, that's fantastic. That's shallow. That's messed up. That's why the oligarchs and the rich, as, as Candace would say, are like actual, you know, it's, there's a spiritual war going on. That taste in my mouth, not literally, but that's, I didn't realize that your body language just kind of pops out. I've drank way too much coffee. Okay, so, and she would not just be a Kennedy wife, she would be the Kennedy wife married to a legacy and a future that would surely mean children, political pan campaigns, a life of endless public scrutiny, quite possibly the White House, and life as first lady. Oh my God, could she handle the attention? Did she even want to? She was only 29 years old. I thought they said she was 36. Anyway, Okay, enjoying a fast life in high fashion. She didn't want to give up that quite yet, as it was. She was already a paparazzi target, followed on the street into boutiques when there were boutiques. I miss boutiques. Would John be okay with them living in a fishbowl? Because Carolyn would never allow that. And that would be a deal breaker. She loved the fame and hated it and didn't know what to do with it. Not like our Diana, not like Diana. Oh, Hattie, Hattie, it's okay. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've lived with this my whole life, he said. Once we're married, they'll lose interest. They'll leave us alone. Oh, just like Lisa Marie Presley thought that they would leave Michael Jackson and her alone. I can't believe Melissa Marie Presley is gone. She's 50. She was 53. Come to the wedding, he said. I'll fly us up there. He had just had the cast removed. Okay, so this was July. Okay, so so they're talking about paparazzi and they'll leave us alone. And then and then Maureen does that break that she does. And then she moves on to the actual day, July 16th, 1999. Okay, now Rory. Rory Kennedy. Before I tell this story, John, okay, Bobby Kennedy, who is not running for office now, okay, he's Bobby Kennedy's son with Ethel, not Jackie, okay, and uh, Rory, it was cousins, and she was the youngest child of Bobby and Ethel Kennedy, and they had 14 children. And Rory was the youngest, and she did. You know what? I'll talk about the puff pieces afterwards because it'll. I, I'll be here for six hours. All right. So on July sixteenth of nineteen ninety nine, just John's cousin Rory. I can explain who all these people are. Okay, um, was getting married at Hyannis, and John expected his wife to go even though he had he had recently moved out of their loft been photographed with an ex-girlfriend and yelled at carolyn to get the blank out of my life from his office phone at george where everyone on staff could hear come to the wedding he said i'll fly us up there he had just had that cast removed from his ankle he was still in flight training. He wasn't licensed to fly alone at night. He didn't care, and Carolyn didn't trust him. She almost, she told, she, she told almost no one. 
but Carolyn was so terrified of her husband's piloting that she would often fly commercial rather than get in the plane with him or drive the four hours to massive to you know where if there was traffic and take a ferry to the vineyard or fly up in a separate private plane piloted by a licensed professional but John never stopped hounding her to do what he wanted. And so, two weeks prior, on the 4th of July weekend, Carolyn caved. Of all the times to cave, she had flown, we're, all, we're at the end of Carolyn, she had flown to the vineyard in a plane piloted by him on one condition. John's flight instructor had to be on board, okay? Now he was insisting on flying the two of them and Carolyn's sister, Lorene, up to the coast for a Kennedy wedding. She didn't want to go and didn't want him flying. But everyone, that is the few who knew what was going on in her marriage, told her to give John a break. If you don't go, his associate, Rosemarie, told her, the tabloids will say you're getting divorced. She got in the plane because of the tabloids and she didn't trust her gut. Just absorb that for a minute. Her sister, Lorene, rooting hard for their marriage, offending, sorry, offered to fly with them for the sister. She thought the wedding could be therapeutic and Lorene was looking forward to meeting up with John's cousin, Bobby Shriver whom she'd begun seeing. And then there was Rosemary, who handled all John's press. There was truth to Rosemary's warning. The press wasn't going to blame John for his wife's absence at a Kennedy wedding on the Cape. And they would certainly never blame him for what Carolyn suspected was his infidelity. Oh no, if this marriage failed, they were going to blame Carolyn for not being caring enough or docile enough or attentive or appreciative of the gift she'd been given being a Kennedy wife, John F. Kennedy Jr.'s wife. I'm really starting to wonder now about Jackie Bouvier's parenting skills. I haven't even gotten there. I'm just throwing out, just based on the way he was, it, it begs you to wonder. It begs the question. And all of the father figures and all of the family that they had around, how did he turn out to be so indignant and self-righteous? Now with this latest Kennedy family wedding three days out, John was begging her to come. And so he was obsessed with his own privacy. He was spilling all their problems to his friend group. Inmate, sorry, in, inmate, inmate. Yeah, he should have been an inmate if he had survived. Intimate details like her five times a week therapy sessions and her drug habit and her refuse, refusal to have intimate relations with him. Well, she uses this word. I just don't know what I'm allowed to say. Um, him, the guy, as one of friends so memorably said, could order it up anytime he wanted. Now John was telling everyone that Carolyn was crazy. But if she was, in fact, so unhinged, wouldn't she be a liability at this wedding? Yeah, you would think so, wouldn't you? If she was that crazy, she'd be a liability. Why did he want her to go? And why did she go? Because of the press? And then the sister goes so that the... Oh my gosh. The last thing John needed was the press speculating over his marriage. And to be fair, from John's perspective, this was part of the deal of what it was to be a Kennedy wife. 
once again for Carolyn three years into a marriage that never felt equal it was all about John and he was insisting on flying his brand new aircraft one far more powerful and complex than any he'd regularly flown before Carolyn really really did not want to go on that plane all right, you know what? I'm proud of myself. You know why? Because I did it. I did the whole chapter, the prologue, everything. And later on today, because it, it is such a good book, I am going to get into Jackie. I do want to do a video about what I know and some opinion pieces about the book separately from reading the book, okay? Um, so yeah, I know Cheer Denise is going to read this book too. She has a totally different style than me, um, but I can guarantee you that having gotten through what I've gotten through and feeling comfortable with this subject, the reading and the stuttering and so on will start to ease away. Thank you for hanging out with me for the last almost hour. It's been an hour and that is a wrap. And you all know my mission statement, right? Welcoming, respecting aspects of all people's societies, even trying to understand the rich and how they, begin, how they become so facile, so vacant, so power hungry. And I, yeah, and I'll be doing a piece, I'll be reading Jackie today as well as um, my transgender piece and why I am so interested in it. And until then, that is a wrap, okay? And thank you for joining me. Okay, bye. Thank you, thank you.